Hi, my name is Acadia Gurney. I am going to be a first year seventh grade and geometry math teacher. And so I have been using the last couple of weeks to create my own resources. And so what I wanted to do was just um, do a quick video on how you can create your own resources. Um, and so what you need is you just need PowerPoint to create your own resources. So I know PowerPoint is a presentation tool, but it actually has some really good features of creating your own resources. And I think it's way easier to use than um, Word and even Google Slides. Um, I like PowerPoint the best because I have downloaded um, some fonts from Teachers Pay Teachers and I can use them in PowerPoint, whereas I cannot in um, Google Slides. So to start with your um, resource that you're creating, you're gonna just open up PowerPoint and go to a blank presentation. So it'll take you to something like this. And then what you can do is you first want to go to design in the top left-hand corner. It's three tabs in, um, so it goes home, insert design. Then you go over to customize side slide size and then customize. And then um, I want mine to be portrait. So I just click portrait right here. And then the width is going to be seven and a half by 10. You can make it seven or eight and a half by 11. I just like to um, have it as seven and a half by 10 because it just leaves a little bit of white space around the worksheet, which I really like. Um, and so then I can just press OK. So here you can um, pick maximize or ensure fit. I usually just do maximize. The only time ensure fit is a better way to go is if you um, say you have already created your, um, your, dot, your resource, but you forgot to actually change the slide size. So you go back and do that last. So your resource is done, but it's on a big slide. Um, you would wanna do ensure fit because it's gonna scale it down to make sure it fits on that presentation whereas maximize would keep it the same. But like in this picture, you can see some stuff might go off on the edges if you pick maximize when you've already created your resource. I just pick maximize and I always do this as my first step. Um, second step is to just get rid of these text boxes. We don't need them. So we can just hover over it, press delete. Um, you can also do this sort of thing and just delete it. Um, but now my, my first thing was actually creating the resource is to insert a shape and then I go rectangle. And then you just start with the rectangle on the top left hand corner and bring it all the way down. And then I go shape fill and I do no fill because I wanna make sure we can see what's on the actual document rather than if we did white, it would cover up everything we're doing. Um, so just no fill. And then if you go to shape outline, um, what I do first is I go to weight and then you can choose the thickness of your um, border. So this, oh, sorry, this is what I'm doing first is I'm creating a border for my um, resource. So let's just say we want it to be two and a fourth. Um, I want it to be black, but I want the dashes to be kind of cool. It's something to differentiate the actual problem or the worksheet from other things. Um, so one thing I was thinking about doing was maybe keeping this, um, dotted this dash thing as maybe homework and this could be activities and this could be um, whatever else you test, for example. So you can kind of use that as an organization tool. Um, that's just something I was thinking about. If you like that idea, um, let me know. So I'm going to just go dash dots. That's one of my favorites. Um, you know, I actually want to make the outline a little bit bigger. So I'm going to go, wait, let's go three. That looks good. So now what we want to do next is insert a text box. So we can just start right here. So sometimes mine does that, I don't know why. Okay, so now we can write name and then put a line and then do date, another line and then period. So right now I'm just kind of doing like a rough estimate. Um, so I'm gonna make that big, but now I'm gonna copy this and put in the fonts I like. So my favorite font, as just a general font is my KG, sorry, not sorry. And you can get that on Teachers Pay Teachers. Um, it was free when I got it, which is awesome. And then I can just control all. And then I wanna make this a lot bigger. Um, I'm gonna even make it one more and then let's get rid of a couple of the period dots. So that looks good, um, good enough where it spans the whole way. I'm gonna leave a little bit of room for the kiddos to write their names up here. And then next, what I wanna do is I wanna insert another text box. And this is where we're gonna create our title. 
Um, so this is a matching activity. And then I always put math in front of it because um, obviously I'm a, I'm a math teacher. So I just put math there. This would be for my template. Um, so I'm showing you how to create a template and then from there you can edit it if you want. But I like to then go to my MG, um, it's called MG Objectives and make that first word, so the math one um, font and then the other one a different font where it says matching activity. So now I'm just making this a lot bigger. Now we're gonna make um, matching, shoot, matching activity a lot bigger as well. Um, there we go. So that is the only thing is the text box do move around quite a bit. So that's just something you kind of have to use a lot. So then I like to center this as well. So this is just my template. So I could write template matching activity, um, or if it was adding rational numbers matching activity, and then I could size it down or whatever. I'm going to just go back and keep it as math. Um, because again, I want to use this as my template and then I'll show you what to do once you want to actually edit it. Then we can insert another text box. I like to do more individual, like smaller boxes rather than one big one. I think it allows me to just have more room to, to play around with the different features and make it more visually appealing. So I'm going to make this KG, sorry, not sorry, make it a little bit bigger, bold it. And then my directions are going to be, um, solve each letter card and match it to the corresponding number. So this might not make a ton of sense to you right now, but once we start creating this, it'll make a lot more sense, I promise. And I'm going to make this just a tad bit bigger. Um, okay, so that's kind of our directions. Now what we're going to do is we're going to actually create our matching cards. So what I do here is we go insert shapes and then I use the rounded rectangle. That's my favorite one to use for the cards. Um, so now we have that and it takes us to our drawing tool. So this is a lot like what we were using for our border. So I'm going to go again, shape fill. I do no fill. Um, outline. Um, I think I did, let's do two and a four and then make them black. So that's kind of what our card will look like. And then what we want to do is insert a text box. And then I'm going to say card A. So these are going to be our letter cards on, our, on the left. Okay. So that's kind of what I have so far. So now what we can do is um, I have this one highlighted and I'm going to press shift and get the um, card as well. And then I'm going to right click, and this is all on a Mac, or I'm sorry, a PC. I'm not sure how to do it on a Mac, um, but I'm just highlighting everything. And then I'm going to group it. Once we do that, now we can control C and then control V, and then it's going to copy everything for us. And then we can say card B, and then we can do it again. And then you want to, do you see how, um, I can't show you, but there's the like really faint red dotted lines. So that's showing us that we have them spaced perfectly and even. Um, so just make sure if you want it to look really, you know, really nice and stuff, you, you keep where those um, lines are and you keep it the same. So again, I just um, copied all of these cards and then pasted them. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight all of them again. So just press shift and then click on them. So now that I have that, I'm going to go control copy, control paste. And then now we can see that they're lined up evenly. Move it over. Perfect. These are going to be our number cards. So these are going to be our answers. The letters are our um, problems. OK. So now we have that so far. So this is just our template. But say we wanted this, this was actually um, our example. So I'm going to just show you. We could just say that we have negative 9 is 12 equals, and let's say card 2 has our answer, which is 3. What we can do now is we can go over here and highlight um, our slide 1, and then you can see how it has that red box around it. Uh, right click, duplicate slide, 
and then we have the exact same slide. So say this is going to be our answer key. Then we can insert, um, I'm going to say a shape. Um, let's make it just an arrow. And then we're going to go to card A to card 2, right, because that's our answer. And then I like to make it a red color and then make it um, have a big width. So then now we know, OK, that's our question. That's our answer. And then you could create that as just your key. I'm going to show you another way we can create a key as well. So I love this activity because you can have the kiddos cut out, cut out all of the cards and then um, actually match them that way. Or um, if you don't have scissors that day, you can also just create like a, um, a recording sheet. So I'm going to show you how to do that as well. So we can just duplicate our slide. Um, so I'm going to just delete all of this stuff. Not all of it got deleted, so that's okay. And then uh, I'm going to leave in the directions. But we had four cards right here, so we're going to insert a table, and it's going to be a two by two um, because each card is, or each um, cell is going to represent one card. I'm going to just copy all of that, go to Table Tools, Design where I am now press this little down arrow where it says more, and then I'm gonna just make it basic. I don't want any shading, I don't want anything with it. Um, and then it does get rid of the borders, so then you just have to go to borders and then all borders. And then um, just make it bigger, so just drag it down to make it the size you want. That looks good. Go back to home, and then I'm gonna write card A matches with card, and leave a little link. And then I'm gonna again make this the format I like. So make it bigger, let's make it 18. I'm gonna make it a tiny bit bigger. Let's do that. Okay, so now we have that. So um, if you were in person, you would make sure you tell the kiddos, okay, right here you would write card, um, I think it was two for that last one. So card A matches with card two, and then they would write in the two right there. And then they would show their work of how they got that. Um, I'm just going to bold work so they know to do that. So now what you can do is just control C and then paste it in. I like to press this one because it keeps the formatting the same. And you just want to make sure you change it to B. Um, again, same thing, but now this is C. And then lastly, we'll do D. Great. So now that you have that, you're essentially done. So this would be the, the student's recording sheets. Again, you can duplicate this slide. And then right here, we could delete that and then just write in two. And then make it, again, I like to make it like a red color so I know it's the key. And then maybe make it a little bit bigger because it's kind of hard to see. OK, so then you can do that. Um, Another thing you could do, so say we didn't um, have this page or this page, so we only have the template. You can save this. Um, so what I usually do is I save my templates just in a folder called templates on my computer. And then what I do is I go in and then I copy. So say I, I wanted to take this one and this one, I could copy it and then paste it into a new um, Google Power PowerPoint, sorry and then start editing it that way. So then I always have my templates and then I always have my updated ones. So this is just a quick little video of how you can make matching activities on PowerPoint. Let me know if you have any questions at all.